Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is an X-linked recessive disorder. There's a mutation in the dystrophin gene, one of the largest genes in the human body. Average age of presentation will be less than 5, classically 4 years. Proximal muscle weakness is there. Pseudohypertrophy of calf and tongue is seen. Patient climbs on himself. Diagnosis is by muscle biopsy and the genetic studies. Most common nerve use for biopsy, sural nerve. Most common muscle use for biopsy, vastus lateralis. This is what is Rynek, congenital muscular torticollis. It usually occurs due to ischemia of the muscle at birth. There can be a swelling inside the muscle. It is associated with TDH, CTV and metacyreductus. The stilted appearance is a cock open appearance. It can appear up till 3 months of life. 90% cases, it can disappear spontaneously. If it does not, and if the age group is more than 4 years of life, you will release the sternoclomester at one end or both ends called a unipolar or bipolar release. You do it before the age of 5 so that the facial asymmetry also called as plagiocephaly does not occur. So age group to operate 1 to 4 years, less than 1, 90% of it disappear, that's why you don't operate. More than 4, chances of facial asymmetry are more, so do it before that. If there is a fusion of cervical vertebra, you will have short neck which is webbed, low posterior hairline, decreased movement. This is Klippelfield syndrome, it is associated with a short high scapula called a sprengel shoulder. The classical trial is a short web neck of Klippelfield syndrome, low hairline, decreased neck movement. 60% cases have spine deformity of scoliosis, 50% have short high scapula called a sprengel shoulder. When the femur and the tibia, they move towards the midline, it's genuverum. When the upper end of tibia maintains the relationship normally with lower and femur, but then abruptly at the metaphysodiaphyl junction, the tibia goes in. It's called as tibia vera. Tibia vera is a part of genuverum along with knee hyperextension and interrotation of the leg. Blount's disease. Blount's as compared to physiological barrus, which is age related and disappears spontaneously, is 60% bilateral. Physiological, 100% bilateral. Blount's worsens with age, physiological improves with age. Blount's treatment is required, physiological it will resolve, nothing needs to be done. What is the treatment in Blount's? Any viral deformity, corrective osteotomy. Take out more bone on the lateral side, less on the middle, lateral based wedge. If you look at this toy of a child, there is a convexity in the sole on which a child rocks, called as rocker bottom. A rocker bottom is compared to a rocker bottom foot, which can be seen in incorrect correction of CTV. We are doing next what is correct correction of CTV or vertical talus. Normally your talus is horizontal, when it's vertical, rocker bottom foot. The image of rocker bottom foot is very commonly asked in exams. Remember that. Flat foot. You know, we have a medial longitudinal arch, which not only puts your foot on the ground and walks, help you walk more efficiently. When it's lost, it's called a flat foot. With a flat foot, the heel goes into valgus, called as plano valgus. Flat foot is two types, flexible and rigid, which is differentiated on the basis of Jack's test. Flexible, when you put your feet on the ground, it's flat. When you take off the ground, arch reappears. Rigid, flat on the ground, flat on the surface. When you have a flat foot, due to congenital vertical talus, it's rigid. Or arthritis, rigid. Infections like TB, rigid. Fusion of tassel bones, because of which I am talking to the rigid. Example fusions are tallow calcaneal, calcaneo navicular, or 
This function of a muscle important for the arch tibialis posterior. These are surgery patients which require surgery, whereas flexible are managed conservatively. So you have rocker bottom foot, convex sole, flat foot, straight foot, and then you have a club foot where you have more of arch in the foot. CTEV, congenital talipus equinovarus, is also called as a club foot because your feet resemble the stick of the golf called the club. So for an orthopedic surgeon, if he looks at this image, this is a CTV foot and this is golf pole on a T. That's what a shoulder joint has been looked like. A large golf ball on a small stand causing it the most unstable joint. This image looks like of a golf club but it can show you an orthopedic CTV and a shoulder joint. So congenital talipus equinovarus. It has four components which one must remember. Cavus which is increased plantar arch, adduction, medial deviation of forefoot and midfoot, varus means inversion and equinus. They are remembered by the mnemonic cave. Cavus, adduction, varus, equinus, cave. This is the order in which you should correct it. So equinus at ankle, varus at subtalar joint, adduction at forefoot and midfoot and grease arch. When you correct, first correct the arch. As the arch is corrected, start correcting the adduction. Then correct the varus, then the equinus. If you do not correct in this order, rocker bottom foot will occur. Classical treatment of CTV should start at birth. It should be cast right at birth, given by Ignacio V. Ponsetti. The man said, correct cavus initially, adduction and varus can be corrected together, equinus at the last. So there was a man called as Kites and there was a man called as Ponsetti. Kites method says, manipulation by the mother right at birth. Ponsetti said, cast at birth. Kite said C, then A, then V, then E. Ponsetti said cavus, adduction and varus together and then equinus. Kite's method said calcaneo cuboid joint put with a one on which you push and correct the deformity. Ponsetti said head of talus should be pushed. In fact, he said pushing the calcaneo cuboid joint will not allow the correction to occur. Kite's method the cast was changed every two weeks, Ponsetti every week. Kites was taking six to eight months to correct, Ponsetti six to eight weeks to correct. And in today's world, which Kites tried to crush, but gradually established, is a Ponsetti method. And the treatment is cast right at birth. Manipulation and cast should continue till you correct it, maybe up to one year. Cast should be above the knee joint. After one year, between the age of one to three, if the cast does not help out or the child presents late, you'll have to release the tissues. You can release them posteriorly, postromedial soft tissue release defined by turcos, the most common release, or complete subtalar release beyond three years. Because in CTV, you know it's a bean shaped foot. You have a large lateral border, small medial border, tight medial structure. When you're pushing to correct, lateral side and open the medial side. This push has to be at the head of talus and open it and apply a cast up till one year. One to three years, release these tight tissues. But beyond that, you need to take out a wedge of a bone, more on the lateral side, less on the medial side, like wedge of every varus. Wherever you take out this wedge will be called with a name. Age group 3 to 5, take out a wedge from the calcaneo cuboid area, do a soft tissue release, 
so 3 to 5 soft tissue release plus a wedge and calcaneocuboid area called as evans 5 to 8 again the same soft tissue release plus calcaneocuboid wedge plus more than 5 years you correct the heel take out a wedge from the heel called as dyer's he start me more on the lateral side because this is fibula laterally less on the middle side the wedge is always the same so beyond five heel correction after eight years you take out multiple tarsal bones called as wedge tarsectomy and beyond ten you fuse the joints called as talonavicular that is tn talocalcinium tc cc and remember it is the talonavicular which is the most difficult to fuse which undergoes false fusion that is pseudoarthrosis so triple means three joint fusion is the standard treatment for 10 years or above once you have corrected let's summarize again at birth cast one to three years soft tissue release three to five soft tissue plus evans five to eight soft tissue plus evans plus heel correction eight to tell multiple tarsal bones beyond tell triple arthrodesis and remember to give CTV shoes after you have attained the correction. CTV shoes should have straight middle border, outer shoe race, no heel to attain corrections. But when the child is not walking, you apply the splint called as Dennis Brown splint. If you have a rigid flat foot, remember the mnemonic. You will have short grade to sole crease, also heel crease. These are the features which are stubborn. You are not able to treat them. Hyperextended grade 2, associated anomalies of spine, neurofibromatosis, or contractures called as arthro joint, gryposis, multiplex congenita, subcutaneous tissue undergoing fibrosis, or rigid feet, tight heel, and short calf. These are the features of a rigid or a resistant glove foot. There is a Pirani scoring for CTV in which PIR, A and I. You have total of six features. Look for the curvature of lateral border, medial crease or a posterior crease. This you identify by looking. Feel for the head of talus or the heel joint. Move the equinus. So it is remembered by the LMP. Teller head. Heel, equinus, lateral curvature, medial crease, posterior crease. The LMP of Pirani. Pirani word has six alphabets. So there are six things in Pirani scoring. Remember that. If there is a history of manipulation of a child by the parent or the guardian, it's called as battered baby syndrome. They will have a classical Injuries in the metaphysis, where there will be a chip fracture in the metaphysis or a bucket handle fracture of the metaphysis. Femur is the most common bone affected in pathological injuries. Classically, on MRI, you can pick up sub epiphyseal microfractures. These microfractures are not picked on x rays. They can be indentation on the ribs, called as knobbing fractures, too. You need a good quality x ray with skeletal survey of the entire body, a single x-ray of the body called a baby gram is not good to pick up these minor injuries. Battered baby syndrome is a topic in forensic, but these are some important points you must remember in orthopedics too. In a child, there can be buckling at the metaphysodiaphyl junction called a torus fracture, which is a bend of a Roman pillar. Or, there can be a bend without a break called as plastic deformation or there can be break in the single cortex called as a green stick fracture. These are the features seen in a pediatric trauma. If you look at uh, the anterolateral bowing of the leg, this is always pathological. It's called as a pseudoarthrosis. Arthrosis means a joint. It's always between two different bones like femur and tibia. But when there is a joint in between a single bone, it's called a pseudo false arthrosis. Congenital pseudo arthrosis of tibia, there is anterolateral bowing. 
It's classified by Crawford into four stages. Type 1, only Boeing. Type 2, Boeing with narrowing. Type 3 is a cyst. Type 4 is a frank joint covered by a cartilage-like material and some fluid. So only Boeing. Boeing plus narrowing. Type 2, cystic frank joint. Treatment, freshen the margins, apply a fixation, put a bone graft, just like atrophic nonunion. If your bone is absent, it's hemimelia. It just doesn't mean that the bone is absent, it means the entire axis is absent. The thumb will not be there in radial hemimelia. The radius will not be there. The muscles on the radial side will not be there. The radial artery will not be there. And the hand will deviate towards the unsupported side. If the ulna is not there, it will go towards the ulna. I remember when I was in Jaipur, I happened to speak on a convocation there. I was taken to ward there by a few students. I met a girl into a medicine ward who had some side of energy. When I carefully saw her, she had bilateral radial club hand means absent radius, absent thumb with deviate fingers like this. Then I clicked this image. I asked her, how do you do it? She said, I'm just a normal person, sir. You know, she was not disturbed by the so-called limitation that God had put on her. Her energy was contagious. When you don't have thumb, you don't have 40% of hand, bilateral thumb gone, no radius, is a huge disability. You know what that girl said? I will top an entrance exam and take up a good seat. Unfortunately in India, I am limited by very few branches. You know she was a fighter. She gave that paper again. For one or two years she struggled but finally took up radiology. She finished radio diagnosis with a gold medal. The nail polish just shows how well she lived. The ring shows she got married. She has a son too. She has a radio center. So whenever people talk about limitations or backaches or fever, I remember that girl and salute in my heart. And then I ask my friends, what can stop you? And whenever I feel I can't do something, I look at this image, there's a smile on my face, fire in my heart, energy in my body, and I'm ready to do it again. Amelia, absent limb. Hamimelia, absent axis. If the fibula is not there, they will be valgus. Look at the fourth and fifth toe, they are smaller. This is the commonest hemimelia. If the tibia is not there, it looks like CTV, but it isn't. But look, the thumb is small. In CTV, the leg is not affected. It's also affected here. Tibial hemimelia, rare one. And sometimes you have a postomital bowing, which is actually a self-resolving condition and very common out of them. Made lung deformity is an abnormality around the lower end of radius where the palmar and the ulnar aspect of lower end radius is less developed. The lower end of ulna becomes more prominent. It is more common in females. 50% cases are bilateral. It is associated with Turner syndrome. It has good results. Nothing much is required. Normal functions. Made lung deformity. When you have uh, polio, it affects the lower limb more than the upper limb. Most commonly affected muscle is quadriceps, which is partially affected. And as the child will walk, he will support his thigh or the knee to walk. Completely paralyzed muscle is tibialis anterior. Upper limb is less affected, but if yes, deltoid. Hand is extremely rare if yes, opponents. 
fatality is due to the involvement of the respiratory muscles.